All right, welcome to today's session of Risa Live. My name is Ben Follett, and today we're going to be looking at parapet wind loading in Risa Floor and Risa 3D together. And so uh, you can see I have a 3D model here. I've got basically an upper roof level that is the entirety of the floor, and then I've got some lower roof levels that are kind of the wings of this particular building. And so we're going to look at some different ways that we can go ahead and add in our parapet levels. And then once we have the parapet levels, we can go ahead and add in our loading for those. And so the first way that we can do this, if I switch to one of our floors here, I'm gonna go ahead and look at our floor plan two. I'm gonna go ahead and click on our floor spreadsheet. And in that we can go ahead and assign a parapet height default to the entirety of this level. And so this is gonna follow in the diaphragm that is assigned. So you can see the diaphragm, in this case, the flexible diaphragm, this diaphragm that's along the edge of this entire condition. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say at floor plan two, I want to put in a four foot parapet height. And so if I go ahead and switch back to the 3D model, here we can see that kind of orangish hue here that represents that four foot parapet height. Now I could do the same thing on the lower level. And if I do the same thing on the lower level, it's only going to apply a parapet to those kind of, if you will, exposed lower roofs. So it's not going to apply it to anything that has floor above it. And so if I hop back into this floor spreadsheet and I put that same four foot parapet height, you can see that it's automatically going to put it along this low roof here as well as if we go ahead and rotate here, oops. We go ahead and rotate here. We can see it on this level as well. Now, in this particular case, I don't really want the parapet on this side. Maybe this is for some other reason. I don't need a parapet here, but I do want the parapet on this low roof. So I'm gonna come back into the floor spreadsheet. I'm going to just def uh, you know, default out or, or you know, set that back to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and select our floor plan one. Now this is the side of, or the, the wing of the building that I want to increase or add a parapet to. And so now I'm going to add it individually based on the columns and walls in this level. So I'm going to go back to turn on our graphical editing and I'm first going to modify the columns. So I'm going to click the draw modify column tool and go to modify properties. And then under the splice options, I have the ability to use a specific parapet height. And so I'm going to go ahead and set it as four feet and choose apply entries by clicking or boxing those columns individually. So I'll click apply and I'm going to go ahead and click this column and then this column. And so if I go back to my 3D view now, we can see that I've got now a parapet, a four foot high parapet assigned from the column that is at the edge of the building to the column that I selected that kind of defines the other edge of that parapet length. Same thing on the other side, column at the edge of the building, and then column that defines the edge of that parapet. Now I also want to assign a parapet based on this particular wall. I'm going to jump back into our floor plan one, and this is the wall I want to choose. So I'm going to go ahead back to our graphical editing, and I'm going to choose the wall panel, modify or draw. I'm going to choose modify wall panels. And again, I can enable the parapet height option here. And so instead of a four foot option, I'm gonna choose a two foot parapet height and click to apply here. So now if I jump back into the full model, we're gonna be able to see our four foot parapet from each column to column. And then we have that two foot parapet length that is associated with this wall. So it goes from the columns that we defined through the wall to the next column that we defined. And so in this particular case, you know, now we have all of these parapets defined um, in the locations at the levels that we wish. We can go ahead and also look at this defined parapet information by selecting either the columns or the walls in their spreadsheets. So if I click on the columns spreadsheet here, we can see on rows 28 and 29, we've got a four foot high parapet here. We can also go ahead and select the wall panel spreadsheet and we can see that we have a default four foot height that's for the second floor level of these larger concrete walls. But for this base uh, masonry wall on the first floor, we can see that we now have that two foot parapet height that's associated with that. Now, once we have our parapet height set, uh, we can go ahead and run the analysis because the analysis for Risa floor and for the gravity design is what's required before we send the model using the director into Risa 3D. And in that process from Risa floor to Risa 3D is where we're going to be able to assign our lateral loads, whether they be wind or whether they be seismic in our automatic load generator. And so with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead to the director and I'm gonna choose Risa 3D. And so the first dialogue that I'm presented with is the wind load generation dialogue. 
And so in this particular case, I can set the code that I'm looking for. So we have a variety of different codes in this case. I'm gonna stick with the most recent ASCE 7 code. We could also change the wind speed to make it whatever we want. I'm gonna leave this at 115 miles per hour. We could change different parameters, the exposure category, the gust stiffness, the topographic factors, so on and so forth. When we're ready with the changes that we've made up here and we have the generate roof loads button on, we can go ahead and click calculate loads. It's gonna go ahead and calculate all our basic information and then we can scroll down to see kind of the more robust or complete information of this particular model uh, for wind load generation. And so the first thing we can see here is we've got floor plan one at 15 feet, floor plan two at 30 feet, and then the entirety of a parapet on floor plan two at that 34 foot. And so we can see the, the values, the KZ, the width and the length values that are associated with that base parapet. If we scroll down further, we can go ahead and see that base parapet has that QZ factor that calculates just about uh, 38 kips of additional force at floor plan two for the parapet. So we've got 38 kips for the parapet and I've got 30 kips here for uh, the floor itself, which gives me a total of 68.7 almost kips that's gonna be put into that floor. So basically we take the parapet, we combine the parapet with what we have at the floor and that's what's the total at the floor. Next we have this floor plan one. So we've got the regular floor plan one that's got 54 kips of force both in the X and the Z direction. We also have this additional 3.625 kips as additional parapet. Now, if we scroll down a bit more in this dialog, we'll see the layout of our parapet. So the upper roof and the lower roof. And the lower roof, because it's a partial parapet, has some numbers defined. So basically some zones for that parapet. So if we scroll down even further, we can see the parapet zones. So one through five with their corresponding heights. So four foot at five and one and two foot at two, three and four. Also the corresponding lengths in the X and the Z direction. And then ultimately what force is calculated based on the wind pressure that we've assigned. And so if we sum up these forces in the X and the Z direction, we're gonna come up with that 3.625 force that's being added back into floor plan one uh, for that particular parapet. Now, when we're ready to go ahead and, you know, utilize this load as lateral load on our structure for design and analysis of elements in Risa 3D, we can go ahead and click okay. I'm gonna skip through the seismic load. We can go ahead and apply it if we wanted to, but in this case, I'm just gonna keep it and click okay. The model's now gonna open up, and so we're gonna jump into Risa 3D. And we'll be presented with all of our lateral elements. Remember, Risa 3D, when linked up with Risa Floor, is where we do our lateral design and analysis. And so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and turn on our diaphragm edge. So I've got our rigid diaphragm, that's that purple color here on the second, on the first floor, and then our flexible diaphragm on the second floor. In this case, it's a metal deck. Now, the first thing that we'll notice right off when we look at the model and these lateral elements is that we will see the columns have been extended above that 30 foot height to compensate or, or take into account that um, roof parapet. And so not only the columns, but our walls as well. So we've got this definition of that parapet for each of these individual walls. Now, if we look down at the lower level, we have the same exact thing for our columns and walls on the lower level. We've got a four foot increase of the height of this column here on this side and on this side as well. And then a two foot increase at the height of this wall here in the middle. Now, if we wanna go ahead and look at or turn on the loads, I'm gonna select the load we wanna look at, that wind load X, and we can go ahead and look at the loads applied. Now, these loads again are uh, a total load with the parapet included in it. So here we have that 68.6 kips and that 57.943 kips at the second level. We could also see the load in the opposite direction, so the Z load. These are loads applied at the center of the diaphragm and then based on the diaphragm type that we've chosen, flexible, rigid, semi-rigid, we would distribute these loads uh, accordingly to the connected elements in the model. Now, if we had to make any changes, we wanted to uh, change the parapet height, or if we wanted to uh, look at uh, changing, you know, the wind speed or something like that, I mean, I can jump back into Risa Floor. My model will open back up, and since that link still exists between the Risa Floor model and the Risa 3D model, I could go ahead and make some changes to the parapet. So I could come back into my floors and, and make an overall change. Maybe it's actually a six-foot parapet, right? I'm going to lose results, obviously, but I can go ahead and do that whole process uh, to create and modify my parapets for this particular building. So that's all we have for this today's session of Risa Live. Um, 
We're going to take a little break with our Risa Live sessions um, and start them back up in October after the release of uh, our new Risa 3D, Risa Floor, Risa Foundation packages. And so in the meantime, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to our support group by emailing support at risa.com, or you can give us a call at 949-951-5815. And uh, we thank you for joining us and for your uh, participation in Risa Live, and we hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.